So the other, the next thing that we learned about was the fact that uh, Canon Rumors confirmed also that they are now saying that the R5 firmware update, the next one that is, is going to be coming out in November. Uh, now, he never says exactly which um, part of November, um, but if I did have to take a guess, it's probably when that supposed second, next, not second, but the next batch of R R5 cameras are gonna be shipped out because it's gonna be similar to what happened in end of August, early September, which was they dropped the firmware and then they put out another batch of R5s along with the shipment of the R6 and it already had the firmware update on that. So if I had to take a guess, if we can find out sort of when the next batch of R5s are supposed to ship, you it will probably be like right before it. If I remember correctly, it's like, it's supposedly either mid-November or like early November. So it's very possible we may see this firmware next week. Don't know when next week, but probably we'll see it next week. So that's so. This is the long-awaited features, um, including one that I don't know if this is true, but we'll get to it. But let's actually go right into it. So um, the features if, that are supposed to be coming with this next firmware update is Canon Cinema Raw Light Edition. Um, so basically, right now, currently in the EOS R5, it has Canon Raw, but uh, it's uncompressed. It's uh, and it's uh, super huge on files. It's really if you have something like DaVinci Resolve. It actually, Resolve actually handles those raw files really, really well. It actually handles the raw files way better than the H.265 codecs. Um, but it's still large files. They're massive files. So uh, it also, I, so Cinema Raw Lite, which is what the C200 shoots, is I love it a lot more because it's a lot more easier, much more manageable files. Um, I'm almost certain it's only going to be an 8K. I'm... I will put money to the bank that it's probably just going to be 8K. I don't see them putting um, for the similar raw light in 4K. Um, by the way, if make are you guys able to hear me? I just want to make sure you guys are okay to hear me. Okay, uh, if there's some issues, just let me know. But uh, the reason why I say I don't think it's going to be 4K because um, anybody that has actually worked with raw understands that pretty much. Mm, almost none except for two it I'll talk to about in a second but almost all of them crop in as you drop down in resolution and the reason why is because raw is just sensor data it's just inf sensor information there's no real processing happening when you're using a raw workflow you're supposed to do all of that in post and that's really the purpose of raw so that's why almost no camera that shoots raw actually does like oversampling because that's that kind of defeats the purpose of raw there's only two again there's only two exceptions that i brought up and that is the nikon z6 and the ursa mini pro 12k that recently came out um, they use some sort of pixel bending technology but um from what i've heard from both in regarding to both cameras whether if it's the z cam with uh not the z cam i'm sorry the Z6, the Nikon Z6 with ProRes RAW or the Ursa Mini Pro 12K with Blackmagic RAW is that there is a serious issue of moray and artifacting with those cameras. And, I have to, and I'm starting to believe it's due to that whole pixel bending process. I'm not sure. I can't confirm it. But that is sort of my ex sort of – that is my theory is that the way they're trying to oversample and process those RAW – is creating that it's creating that um, artifact in those morays that we're seeing in both of these cameras. So that's so I don't think Canon is going to pursue that in this camera. Most likely, it's just going to be 8K. But let's continue on. Uh, here's the the surprising one. Well, semi, but sort of surprising. Uh, we all knew Canalog Three was going coming to uh, in this firmware. The surprising one is Canon Log. Two. Now, um, I want to also point out that I sort of try to search around to see if anybody else was reporting this. And as of right now, no one else is reporting that Canalog 2 is supposed to be coming. I'm not saying that, you know, Canon Rumors is wrong on this because he has been pretty reliable uh, with all of with his findings typically. But I'm just letting you guys know just for, you know, 
for clairvoyances, this is the only this is the only article I've seen so far that is saying that this firmware is supposed to come with Canalog two. Uh, but we don't know for. But uh, I just want to point that out. But if it is, I'm going to kind of toot my little my own little horn because uh, I kind of mentioned this in my C log discussion video. If you didn't see that, uh, definitely go check that out. It's uh, I'll leave a link in the description once this uh, stream is over. But one of the things that I talked about was that there, if there was one camera that could probably take advantage of C log two between the R5 and the 1DX, uh, it would be the R5, and that was because of the 4K HQ mode. And the reason why I talk about it is because, uh, as I mentioned, Canalog 2 has very, very aggressive shadow retentions to the point that it really needs a 12-bit codec in order for you to actually use it unless you use some sort of combination of, like, large sensor and oversampling, or you're using some sort of sensor technology like the C300 Mark III with their DGO to really combat that noise problem. And the R5 does it because it has an 8K sensor and it's oversampling from 8K to 4K and it's a full frame sensor. So I felt like if, they, if there was a way to put C-Log2, that would be the one mode. I would be shocked if they put it in the other mode. If they did, I'll just let you guys know right now, I wouldn't recommend you using it if it was like 4K60 or even 4K120, any of the regular modes, if it isn't raw, because I don't believe the, I don't believe those modes have the technology that can deal with that shadow aggression that C-Log2 has. Um, but if, again, if this is true, if this is true, this is a big, this is a pretty big deal, because now that means we can actually see Canalog 2 as we're recording, which is one of the really big problems with recording raw with this camera is that you can't really see what you're actually recording. It's sort of more guessing. So hopefully this is true and we can get it. Uh, next thing is, I know a lot of people have been waiting for this and that is the 1080 at 120 frames per second frame rate. Uh, that's supposed to be coming. There's supposed to be some further tweaking to the temperature controls. So that's great. And a couple more bug fixes. Um, and then there's something about uh, other, other codecs being worked on but may, may not arrive in time in November release. This one has kind of got me interested. It's, it's very vague, but it's got me interested. And the reason why it's got me interested is because, and I'll cut this because there's not really much left of the article. It's got me interested because I think they're going to put XF AVC in this camera. If they do, I will be so happy. This will be one of the most amazing cameras because... The one of the things that always confused me once they announced the C70, I was like, wait a minute. This, uh, the C70 has XF AVC, again, which is an amazing codec. It works really well. In, it's easy to deal with in post. And it only has SD cards. This has a CF Express card in it and an SD card. But it doesn't have XF AVC. So, and the, C, the C500, which ha uses uh, CF Express, that also has XF AVC. And that can and that can shoot it. So why I, I was always confused. Why didn't they put XF ABC? Because it's their codec. I don't understand why they didn't put it in there. But that's what I think is is coming. I think that other codecs that they're speaking up there is the XF ABC. And if that's the case, um, again they're saying it's not probably coming with this November firmware. But if it comes out in a later a later firmware, I will be so so happy with it.